All right, team, welcome back. It is your biggest fan, the real Casadero, and I brought the ship up to transmission depth to broadcast my pirate signal yet again, team. Hey, some people didn't hear the sound. They did. They disappeared. They're gone. They're gone. But it's all good, man, because we are here and we're going to get after it, team. So check it out. The question, well, kind of a question in the comment. I want to be a developer slash programmer. Should I learn algorithms? Yes. Yes. Long story short, yes, we should learn algorithms, but not pro probably not the way we think we should learn them or the algorithms that we think we should learn. If we set out like right at the outset, like, hey, man, I want to get me a job as a programmer. I'm going to go crack me a book open. I'm going to learn me some algorithms. You are going to have a tough time. Now, here's the deal. You may get through the interview because you will get good at answering these algorithmic questions. And and here's the thing. We see the same algorithmic questions all over the Internet. We, we, we see interviews on YouTube where people do like live coding interviews. Um, we see them in the books. Uh, we see them in the uh, and then in interviews ourselves when we go to the interviews. Like I didn't I didn't know how true this was until I went. I started going to interviews and, and I don't I don't talk about the interviews a lot. So like the last two days I had two interviews and then prior to that, like months and months and months ago, and spread out over time since like the mid-2018. That's when I was applying for developer jobs. And in, a, in, the, in the interviews where they ask questions about code or you do whiteboard interviews, it's typically the same stuff. And it is, but it's, it's structured a different kind of way. And so when it comes to algorithms, the questions you get, the stuff you run into, they're based around these complex problems that are typically based around scalability. And so this will be things like like, um, you know, say you say you get a say you get a list, an array of names. How would you how would you put the names in alphabetical order? How would you filter out just the names that start with the letter A? How would you make sure it's a name? Right. How would you. Uh, determine last name from first name, stuff like that. So basically it's how you manipulate this data. And then the more data you get, how long is it going to take you to manipulate that data? So like, say for instance, you have an array of a thousand names. It'll take, it won't take you very long. Like if you just loop over the array and you just grab the names you want, like say you're looking for all the names that start with a, and the array isn't sorted. You just go through each value in the array, grab the name you want, put it in another array and you're done. And it would be really quick. But if you're going to do this over, say, a billion names like Facebook, for instance, it would take forever to do something like that because you'd have to look at each name and check this letter. And so there's algorithms to make that process faster. So you would study algorithms in that case. And so there's 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 people every day who use these algorithms in their work. But but here's here's another thing. Me and you and all of us as web developers and programmers and business owners and everybody, we all use algorithms every day. When we take a shower, when we wash our hair, when we cook food, a recipe is just an algorithm for making food. So everything in all of life is an algorithm, a system of processes to get from some sort of problem to some sort of solution. And the ultimate goal in all of this stuff is to build the ultimate solution. A solution that exists before every problem. And that solution is intelligence or artificial intelligence. And, and that, so we're going down a, a, a whole nother road. But in keeping that all in mind, that's why algorithms are important. Because what we're trying to do is we're trying to condense time and we're trying to get more out of that time. And in order to do that, we've discovered just as human beings in this 3D world that the best way to condense time and to get the more, most out of it is to create some sort of process and then optimize the process. So this is what every business is doing. This is what every business owner does. They come up with some sort of thing that they know how to do or they like to do. They systemize it into a process. Sometimes they put checks and balances on it to make sure that process is super precise, that the things that the process produces are very accurate or very safe or very whatever, very creative. It could be anything. And then what you do is you is is you attempt to create that thing over and over again or variations of it as fast as you possibly can. And you do that by systematically optimizing the process. And so what are you doing is you're refactoring the algorithm. So when we talk about these algorithmic problems, what's going on? 
why companies would look for people who understand this stuff. And and we're going to delve a little deeper into that. Why people will look for companies that understand algorithms because they're looking for people to 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 learn about and understand their processes and then be able to help improve and or maintain those processes. So the likelihood of you the likelihood of you going to work someplace and actually seeing a, 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 a algorithm like where we're like, hey, like, hey, guys, this is the algorithm that does like it won't be presented to you like that. It'll be like a it'll be it's just a program. It'll just be a program and you'll have to do something inside of this program. But inside of this program, you have these. The way the code is written is is written based on the concepts of these very popular algorithms. And when I said before, like we all use algorithms every day, they're everywhere. The how our pixels get drawn on the screen, how web pages get drawn inside of the browser, how stuff shows up on our phone. There's algorithms behind all that stuff. There's algorithms doing. I mean, just the, the number of things are crazy. Right. So, yeah, we should learn algorithms, but not necessarily in the way we think like. To just go out and study because studying algorithms won't give us the knowledge to really build anything. And if we build stuff, we're forced to learn the algorithms because they become a solution to the problem. Now, here's the deal, right? If we don't know that these two things are interlinked, what will happen is we'll go out and we'll try to write a solution for every problem. Or we'll go out and we'll look for other people who've wrote a solution to that problem and we'll just take their solution. But we, we, won't, we don't know how they did it. We don't know how they came up with that solution, right? Typically, most of the time, 90% of the time, they had a problem that they, they were very entrenched in and they thought through this thing and they ended up writing an algorithm. But there are often times where they've gone and got code from somebody else and they've used it. And so we end up in this place where we don't really understand what's going on. That's why, that's why companies ask these algorithmic questions. So if we want to get a job somewhere, yeah, we should, we should study some algorithms. But again, at the same time, it's not all the way about the algorithms. It's about our ability to logic um, over things and reason about stuff and break down larger problems into smaller problems, team. But yeah, we should be learning algorithms. Now, here's another reason why we should be learning algorithms, because they teach us, they, they, they teach us about basically the underlying structure of everything but also some like core 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 com computer science concepts that may benefit us al along the way but we shouldn't learn them just by themselves because by themselves they're useless and they're more difficult to understand if we don't have a problem to apply them to so even when when we when we when we're so maybe we make algorithms like a part of our study regimen, our study schedule. Maybe we're going to study a problem a day or, or whatever, right? And so the, uh, the, the, the study of algorithms would become a part of, you know, how we study. But then when we go to study these algorithms, we can't be trying to learn them and memorize them just to learn them and memorize them because it it'll be a disaster. It'll just, it won't work. I mean, it'll work. You can learn them and memorize them. But like I said, a lot of them you won't use in your daily life. So here's the deal. When when you like you, you can go pick up a book on algorithms like the algorithm design manual uh, books for people who want to learn, who want to get jobs as programmers, like cracking the coding interview. I hear is like a great book. Um, and then like a lot of the questions that I've been asked, they've been in that book, too. Uh, but again, like I found that, like, it's not necessarily about the syntax or anything or even about the algorithm itself. It's just about your ability to communicate what it is you're trying to do and how you would do it and then inside of that is your knowledge of computer science at any given point point. and so when you're explaining this to somebody if they have a good understanding of computer science or how applications are built or architected then they'll understand that hey maybe this person they don't know exactly how to go about finding this solution but they're on the right path they under they 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 know what's going on all right so this the when we go, when we set out to start studying algorithms, because we should learn them, we've already determined that. But when we set out to study them, each algorithm, we want to ask, like, how could I apply this? Is there something going on in the world where I could use this particular algorithm to do something? Like last night, I was working on an algorithm to parse out, um, what is it called? To parse out the names from a domain name. So you have a URL 
www.therealcasadero.com, right? A, a program, a little piece of software that will read that name and then return just the real Casadero. It will eliminate the www dot and it will elim eliminate the dot com and just return this name. But inside of that, there's all these other things. So like, what if I have like a, um, what if it's a subdomain and it, does, it doesn't start with www? But maybe it starts with like blog or start or anything. Or, or maybe for instance, I've done something where, where I have a setup and it goes www.therealcasadero.co.uk. Now I have multiple dots. And so this algorithm has to change. And, we, and so, and there's more mechanisms that have to go into it. There has to be, okay, all right. So if this part matches this, then do this thing. If this part matches that, then, then do that thing. So there's all this different stuff involved. But when we think about algorithms, typically we think about these neat little boxes. We don't know what's inside. And then somehow we just go out and we just magically learn them. An algorithm, like I said, is just a series of steps. It's a series of decisions made. Hey, right. Do I go left or do I go right? If I go left, what's going to happen? If I go right, what's going to happen? And so that's the algorithms that people are talking about. So when we say at the core of it, when we talk about, hey, man, should I learn algorithms? What we're really saying is like what the question we're really asking is, should I learn how to think logically through a process? Sy well, not even logically, but systematically through a process. And always keeping in mind what the 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 end result is going to be or what I want it to be. All right. So that makes building algorithms simple. Now, of course, there's complex mathematics. Like if you, you could, there's algorithms and things we could get into that are full of all kinds of stuff. Complex mathematics, regular expressions for, for reading over large pieces of, of information and, and extracting, you know, little bits of information that we need. And I mean, we just see this stuff every day in our everyday lives too. So when we're, when we're learning this stuff, we're thinking like, hey, like how could I use this right now? Is there something I could apply this to? And then you say, all right, I'm gonna go do this in this environment or on this system. And then you go give it a shot. So like for me as a web developer or wanting to be a web developer or wanting to build web applications or whatever, right? If I'm looking at an algorithm, I'm gonna like, okay, all right. This is what this thing does. How can I apply this to what I'm doing now? Maybe on the front end, maybe I can use this to to generate links and put them on a page. Or maybe I can use this to sort images by whatever. Or maybe I can use this to um, to to somebody clicks this button. It'll re remove all of these things and then put all these things up and make some sort of cool animation or something like that. So that's the kind of stuff we're looking for. And then it's like, all right, how do I apply that to this language? And there'll be mechanisms in every algorithm that you see that you can use. So it's like, all right, in order to do this thing, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to take this value and then we're going to have to loop over this value until it's done. So now you go to the programming language, JavaScript. How do I create a list of items? And then how do I loop over those list of items? And then you go to the next part in the algorithm. All right. So this is in the and it gets complicated because it's all X's and Y's and stuff like that. It's very it, it looks very mathematical, but because we have the tool of the computer to help us get through this stuff, it's a lot easier than it looks at the outset. And, and this stuff, like this whole algorithm stuff that I'm talking about, if you think about it that way, is going to help you build stuff. You'll be able to build stuff sooner. And if you couple that with just the, the whole broad of, of what an entire application is, right? An application has to have a user interface. It has to have, you have to host it somewhere so people can get to it. And then there's some sort of logic involved. It displays stuff on the screen. It performs some sort of calculation. It does something, right? So when you understand all of that stuff, now you're thinking like, hey, right, how do I build out these things, right? I got to have a way for someone to interact with this thing, right? It could be a web page. They click on stuff. It could be a command line interface where they type in a command or a word. It could be anything, Right? And then it's like, OK, what happens when they click this button or when they type this command? That's your algorithm. That's your logic. You're figuring that out. Once that's figured out. Then you go, hey, how do I get this thing on the Web and how do I deploy it out to the people? And so, yes, that's why learning algorithms is an important thing to do. But again, but again, team, you want to go about it in a certain kind of way. You want to each each time you go out to learn this stuff. You got to have a question because it's going to help you learn it, learn it faster or else you'll be spinning your wheels for a long time and you won't you won't know what you know and you won't know what you don't know. But also. Right. And keeping in mind the landscape out there of, of how there's more and more people who are getting into code and there's less and less people who's 
who, I mean, nobody really wants to study a bunch of stuff. So what happens is, is as more and more people go into the marketplace, people who are hiring these people who are going to spend money, right, they have to figure out how to vet these people. And so we're going to start seeing more and more things like, like, you know, these algorithmic questions. And the questions are all the same because nobody really does this stuff on the regular basis. The, the person, the person who's, who's writing the super complex algorithm to, to say, for instance, parse all of Google's data or the people that are working on that, they, they're not going to spend their time interviewing entry-level people. They're going to be interviewing people that have built some stuff, that have done some stuff, people that are coming from other companies. We're talking about these jobs, 250, 300, 400, 500, 600, 700,000 dollars a year, stuff like that. Now, it may be stuff we can do. It may not be as complicated as we think. But again, if, if, if we get to a point where these people are interviewing us, we probably know enough. So in order to get our foot in the door, Right. We got to learn to build stuff first and then go into the algorithms. But again, right, a lot of interviewers ask these types of questions because that's the questions that everybody asks. And they're trying to vet people out. Right. They're trying to 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 root, to root people out. So you want to learn that stuff. Basically, what it all boils down to is you want to learn algorithms. We don't want to spend all your time learning algorithms. You should spend the majority of your time building stuff or, or coming up with ideas that can be built. And then how you can apply that stuff to that thing. And the, the goal is you want to have stuff that you can show to people. In, in every phone call that I've had, every interview, every whatever, right, they've asked like, hey, right, what have you worked on? And it's like, oh, I've worked on this thing. And then it used to be I would point to GitHub like, oh, I did this thing on GitHub. Oh, I did this thing over here. I did this thing there. Right. That's what the portfolio website's for. So you got this portfolio website. And inside of your portfolio website, you got all the stuff that you worked on, the things that you've built, right? And maybe you built something based on some sort of algorithmic concept that you found in a book like the Algorithm Design Manual. I have one around here somewhere. It's right there. Like you found in the book like the Algorithm Design Manual or something like that. So you would, in your GitHub, you'd have like, yo, this is what I did. This is how I did it. And then you can put that in your portfolio and then people can see it. And after you go through that whole process, whatever algorithm that was, you're going to understand it immensely. You're going to understand it better than most people. It's going to be uh, you're going to have this framework in your brain, which is going to enable you to build other stuff based on that knowledge. Uh, it's going to enable you to be able to talk about it more clearly with people. And even if you can't go to the whiteboard and write it all down or write it all down on a piece of paper or type it out in code in 15 minutes, if you can logically explain to somebody what it is that you want to accomplish and the steps you would take in going about trying to accomplish that thing, then you're probably going to be better off than you think. There's no reason to like master every algorithm out there, team. You just want to, you want to learn them. So they're in your toolbox and you want to learn them in a certain way that you can deploy those tools when you need them, team. I'm your biggest fan. The real Casadero Trav has come and dropped me a super chat, team. I didn't even know because I was up in the camera. So now what we're going to do is we're going to hit the question and answers, team. We're going to, I mean, well, yeah, we're going to hit the questions and answers. Any questions you guys got, just drop those in the chat. I'm run through the chat real quick. I'm going to answer whatever's going on here. And then when we're done, your biggest fan, the real Casadero, is going to blow up out of here, team, because we still got some work to do, man. It's 2020. We got we got big old plans, man. Also, if you guys got projects or something out there that you're working on, hey, yo, drop a link in the chat if you feel if you feel so bold, man. We're working on some stuff over here that's going to catapult the whole community team. I'm telling you, man, me and my man, Charlie Murphy, man, we're, we're out here getting it. And I've been having some deep thoughts lately. It's going to be a good year. So far, so good. So let's check out this chat team we got. We got the Ghana Studios. We can't hear nothing. Hey, yo, I hope you guys can hear me now. <laughs> hey, yo, team, I, I thought I activated the mic and I hadn't, but fortunately I got the mixer right up there, so I, I caught it. And then somebody said something in the chat, too. It was you who said something, right? You're the very first person. Uh, Fred says, no sound, no sound. Show, show us a sign that you acknowledged. <laughs> My bad. Okay, finally. Sorry, Fred. My bad, Fred. Following you from Morocco, your content is dope, bro. You must do daily live. Yes, I'm here every day, team, and we're about to step up the game, man. We're about to step up the game. We're gonna do. Hey, look, man. Just hey, hey. This is what you guys want to do if you want if you want to be abreast of what we're doing. Cause I'm 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 I will be actively avoiding talking about future plans. We're gonna be talking about ideas. We're gonna be talking about 
current events. We're going to be talking about the, the core of everything we talk about here is to is to help people get to the next level team, answer questions, generate ideas, give people insights, stuff like that. Right. So I'm not going to be talking a lot about, hey, man, I, you know, I got this thing planned. And so I got to avoid it because I'm a storyteller, man. I like to tell stories. I like to build this big picture. That's my gift. That's 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 what I'm able to do. Build these big pictures, get people get people riled up, man, get them going off in a direction and then keep pushing them until they get to where they're going. But anyway. But anyway, team, what you want to do is I'm going to show you guys. I'm going to show you guys what's up real quick. You want to check out the real And I use the Brave browser. This is not an advertisement for Brave, man. It's just the browser that I use. And, and how I access it is it, it looks like this when it pops up. And something is missing. I have a plugin that usually that I just set up not too long ago. It shows me all the news. But anyway, real quick recap for Brave for people who've never seen it before. It blocks ads. It's super secure. Uh... Every connection is HTTP. Uh, it saves you time and then it gives you money. Right. And, so, and this again, I get nothing from Brave when you guys go. You'll know. You'll know when Brave is paying me because I'll, number one, I'll tell you and then I'll give you an affiliate link. And you, <laughs> But there's no affiliate link, team. So you check out the real casadero.com team. This page is playing. It's going to be changing. I got some of my biggest supporters up here, team. Hey, yo, look, check it out. Hey, if you aren't up here and you want to be up there and you're inside of the code 365 startup lab or you've been supporting the channel through super chats, what you want to do is you want to email me the real casadero at the real casadero.com so I can put your name up here. This section is going to turn into something big later on, team. I'm telling you, it's going to turn into something big, right? These are these are some of the initial people that um that have have catapulted the real casadero to to success and 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 they're probably going to be with me all the way to the top team uh so that's one thing that's one thing and then all of you people all of you folks who are already in the code 365 startup lab team your names are going to go on here too uh so just hang tight man we're working on a bunch of like like now we we just got a bunch of stuff going on over here, team, and I'm trying to get everything organized so we can start pushing out more information, more content, more that's more organized, that's more to the point. But also, I want to give I want I just want to give you guys stuff you can use, bro. That's it. So that's what we're working on. Let's look at this back here. So I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Uh, the Ghana. So what you want to do is you want to stay up to date, stay up to date. Head over to the real Casadero.com team. Yo, right there. You can drop your email address in there and you can subscribe. And what'll happen is you'll get an email when um when I drop new stuff, right? Stuff that's that's well, sometimes related to the channel, not related to this channel. There's a lot of emails in here right now. I haven't sent an email to anybody, right? So if you haven't gotten one, that's why. Right. But this is where you go. And then also, right, we got links up here to the YouTube channel. We got links to uh, all the social media places and everything, team. So you can find me in all these different places and you'll you'll have updates about what's going on. But yes. We are, we are, we are live. We are live. So if you head over to the, I'm going to do a control shift in youtube.com forward slash the real Casadero. And you can all also reach the real Casadero through the webpage, but yo team, just hit, go over here, hit the subscribe button. And then the notification bell is going to pop up. You want to make sure you select that notification bell. So you're notified whenever I go live and then boom, now you got all the information team. Let's see Neil Floyd. What is up team? Juan Romero. He's got a dope story for you guys, man. This guy right here, Romero126. Dope story, dope story, man. It is a story of, uh, of, of, uh, it's a cool story. He knows what I'm talking about. He'll tell it when he's ready. Maybe not here because we might not be here long enough. So maybe on the next broadcast. Uh, Christopher Leviston, it looks very mathematical when there's no context, but once you're in there, it makes total sense. There you go. Christopher Levison, that's an insight, man. And that's what holds a lot of people up, right? We want to get into web development and we, we run into this stuff. We hear algorithm. We go, oh, shit. It's not, man. You're just passing data around, literally passing data around. And that's why it's, it's hard to explain in a video link that most people are comfortable with. People get people get antsy after about 20 minutes. They want to get up and run away, bro. And so that's why that's why that's why we, that's why I got the code 365 startup lab. That's why I make these videos. That's why I produce like the tutorial stuff is is to because at some point it clicks. Like if you just start doing and you start building stuff and you start thinking through this stuff at some point, it just pops. It just goes click and you're like, oh, OK, all right. I think I know how to do this. And you have a little more confidence and you got to keep going. You got to keep the momentum. Right. Build something else. Apply for the job. Go do the interview. 
get the job, do the job, help somebody else. Right. And you have these tiny steps that all add up to confidence and, cur- and, and all the, the, you know, and that's that goes towards eliminating imposter syndrome. But I want to be honest, man, it does not get easy. Some of us are under the impression and some people give us the impression that like, yo, bro, like when it clicks, you're just going to turn into fucking Neo from the Matrix. And that's you. You don't. It's impossible to do. It's always hard. It's always difficult. It's just that you're on a different level of difficult than the people who came before you. And what happens when you're on this different level of difficult, the people who come before you, they will support you and they will push you even higher if you show them the way to get to where you're going. Now, some people do this honest. Some people do it dishonest. Right. They'll say, hey, look, come be with me. I want you to be as good as me. But then they won't give you all the information because they want you to follow them as long as possible, because you will continue to push them higher. You continue to catapult them. So you just got to be aware of that team. You got to be aware of that. But um, but beyond that, there beyond that, there's some good people out there, man. They'll give you all the information. They'll tell you everything you need to know and you can surpass them. Right, bro. I started on YouTube with some people who are like way, way ahead of me, man. Just gave them the motivation. They took started running. Right. You know what I'm saying? So that's the deal behind that. But Christopher Levinson, man, he he set it up. He said it, bro. It seems hard. It really hard before you before you get into it. Then you get into it and you're like, oh, OK. All right. All right. And here's the deal. Even the most complex things can be broken down to make it. it they be, you can make them simpler in their little pieces, but it doesn't make it easy. It doesn't make it easier. And that's the point. That's the point of living is to overcome challenges. Right. And so for us, for whatever reason, we chose the challenge of computers. I chose the challenge of computers because it's my calling. But also now that. That I've grown more into, I've I've become more comfortable with who I am and sort of what I believe in. I've realized that, like, it's really not about the computers, man. It's about what they make possible, what they make capable, and then what, what they tell us indirectly. Everything is related. And it's not as complicated as we think. Even the most complicated, most complicated math equation is based on addition and subtraction so if you can break the whole thing down into addition and subtraction you're good to go it's our ability to do stuff like that that sets us apart from everybody else right and the deal is 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 the people who are able to do that very well not just in their mind but they're able to do it in their head and then either physically do it in the physical world or motivate other people those are the people that run the businesses that run the government that run that run the world essentially and we can all do that Nobody has to be above anybody else, man. We just got to get along. But before we can all be our own sovereign people and not have to answer to other people or not be manipulated by other people, we got to start to think for ourselves, team. Right. And we got to start to understand that, like, hey, look, right. Everything is made up of pieces. The whole universe is made up of of atoms and antimatter. Or is it atoms, antimatter? I think I got atoms for sure. There's something uh, there's something in between. (laughs) <laughs> the atoms, right? It's made it up of that stuff too, right? All little pieces. So if you want to build something big, you just take little atoms and you put them together until you end up with the molecule. Then you take the molecules, you end up with the cell. That's all programming is. That's all programming is. But we don't mold ones and zeros. Well, I guess kind of we do. Anyway, I'm babbling now, team. Let's go down here a little bit. Uh, we got uh, Christopher Levinson says, sup, y'all? Stopping by for a little bit. Hey, I appreciate it, man. Christopher always comes in and gives me the shout out. It looks very mad. Yep, you said that. Hey, how we doing? Hey, Berkey Tamer. Thanks, team. Hey, we're doing fantastic out here, team. We're just out here. We're writing code for fun and profit, team. Writing code for fun and profit. Keeping people up to date on what's going on. Keeping people motivated, inspired, all this stuff, man. Like I said, we're doing it out here in 2020. Uh, Let's see. Chait Daride. What kind of math do I need to learn first before I start learning programming? The kind of math you need to learn before you start learning programming is addition, addition, subtraction. It it sounds like a joke. It sounds like a joke. But literally, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. That's all the math you need. You don't need to do, you don't need to study anything else. Anything else that you need to do when you begin to try to figure out, figure it out with those things, and if you are 
if you don't try to answer everything yourself, all the other stuff will come. Everything is addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. That's it. All of it. The whole nine yards. Now, there will be some instances where, like, for instance, I got a question. It was like, hey, you get a li- you get three array of you get three arrays of numbers that have been sorted. How would you put these arrays together, but keeping the numbers in the same order that they were that they were sorted? And so that's a that's that's number one. That's a hard question to ask. So typically the person has to say it a few times because we can keep we can just take the arrays and put them together one after another. They would still be in the same order they would sort it. But that's not the that's not the answer they're looking for. They're saying like, hey, like we want to squash these down. So if you got an if you got one array, that's one, two, three, four, five, six. And you have another array that's two, four. I mean, if you have one array, that's one, three. Every other number, for instance, like it's just odd numbers. And then you got another array that's even numbers. How do you put those two arrays together? So the odd numbers, so they so they so they make one continuous number. So you put the odd numbers and the evens together in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Right? And so now you got three arrays. Maybe in the three arrays, you have uh odds, evens, but minus like the every fifth number or something like that. And then your third array is every fifth number and you're counting X amount of numbers. How do you take these arrays and you put them together? There's a million different ways to answer that question, but there's there is there is something out there that exists, an algorithm that exists. That is believed to do this the most efficient way possible. And up until now, it has been the most efficient. Now, when we try to do some shit like fly away to a whole nother galaxy or something, maybe we'll need a more complex algorithm. And at that time, we'll figure it out. But until we need to answer that question, there's really no need to 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 be focused on optimization of the algorithm or more complex math, complex mathematics or stuff, unless your goal is to create the ultimate solution to every problem, which in in the, in the 3D realm would be artificial intelligence, which is us. We are here, human beings. We're a solution to every problem that can arise on this planet. And our goal is to create synthetic beings, synthetic intelligence that will replace us in doing this. Right. We won't say it outright, but that is the case. And we want them to replace us in this stuff so we can focus on other things. The only way we get to another galaxy is with artificial artificial intelligence. The only way we get to artificial intelligence is through algorithms, very complex algorithms. The only way we get to very complex algorithms is simple algorithms. The only way we get to simple algorithms is with simple concepts, simple mathematics and the manipulation of simple objects and how we and, 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 and now you're at the very beginning of computer science you're at the core foundation you're where you are right now and i guarantee 14 out of 14 people in this room or beyond that lowest level because you're here you know what to look for i'm just telling you like hey man you're going in the right direction keep moving in that direction you got this team all right trav again bro thank you so much sir thank you so much Tra- uh, j- hey man i'm telling you man you guys are freaking awesome s-a-a-a-r-c sark can the internet make us millions? Yes. Everybody in this room can be a millionaire from the internet. Guaranteed. That's no bullshit. Everybody in this you you could be a decamillionaire, a hundred millionaire. Everybody in this room. There is number one, there is more than enough money to go around. Number two, the government is printing money every day. Number three, not just our government, every government on the planet is printing money. Number four, if you have the ability to to here, look, some people identify problems. Some people identify solutions. And just think that when you're out in a conversation, the next time you're out in a conversation, you're having a conversation with somebody. And sometimes you can set them up like like I'll, I'll I do this, but I don't do it on purpose. I'll present a problem. And then. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing. What kind of person this that they are by whether or not they present a solution or they commiserate with the problem. But I don't do this. I don't do it on purpose. Like, like 90% of the time is, is, is programmed into me. And I think I got it. I, I got it. I got it from where I grew up. Number one. And then it was sort of enhanced by the military. So, so what'll, so what'll happen, right? Let's say you ha- you're having a conversation with somebody and you'll be like, you know, man, I've been having a hard time with, 
uh, my house, right? Maybe like the furnace. I've been having a hard time. Or your car. Like my car just cuts off random. I've been having a hard time with my car. Some people are like, oh, man, that sucks, man. I had this old car and it does this, that, and the third. And then they'll start talking about some other stuff. And, bro, those are problem-oriented people, right? And if you and if you look close and you think about, like, all of the friends you know like that, you'll begin to notice this pattern, right? And you And you notice the pattern because you are seeking a solution. There is some place you want to be. You want more money. You want more time. You want more stuff. You want, there's more of something that you want. You know what I'm saying? But just beware that when you're in the next conversation, there, there's some people, they have solutions. But those people are scary people to us because sometimes they're so, they're so into the solution that they make us feel like we can't do shit, right? And, but that's, that's not on them. That's on us. It's because we don't have confidence. It's because we, we, we're focused on the wrong stuff. And so, but again, right, like these, these are better people to have because they make us stronger. But a lot of people, they get left behind. They, they go, oh, man, these, they, they've changed. They don't care about me no more. They're, they're, uh, they're too good for us. They look down their nose at me. Stuff like that. That's what, hap- that's what happens when you become a solution-oriented person and you're surrounded by people who only identify problems. And, and you, in knowing this and having this intelligence... You should know not to be that way because, right, if you can if you can turn up somebody who only I only sees problems into somebody who's who sees the problem, identifies the problem, knows it exists, but is able to go out and find solutions. You will never need anything. You will. Right. Times may get tough, but you will have the skill set and the knowledge and hopefully, right, confidence is the confidence is the, the ingredient that a lot of people are missing. They uh, most people I meet have the skills, even when they don't. Like they'll be they'll do something. You ever you ever somebody ever do something? You go, hey, man, that was really cool. That was really good. And then they go, ah, oh, man, it was no big deal. Right? Or I got lucky. Some people are saying I got lucky because they really believe they got lucky. But the ones who the ones who continue to get lucky over and over and over again, they say I got lucky because they know that if they say anything else, you're going to feel like shit. So they say I got lucky. But that's even more detrimental because we feel that we can't do what they did unless we get lucky. So now we're walking around looking for luck. You can't be walking around looking for luck. Team. So that's what that's, what that's all about. The, yes, the Internet can make everybody the inter, bro. The Internet can make everybody in this chat room. Everybody in your family, everybody in your neighborhood, everybody in your town, your city, in your country. Everybody can be millionaires. Now, here's the deal. It's not about the money. It's about what the money can buy you. Right. And it's, it's not even about what the money can buy you. We're all we're all looking. We're all chasing a lifestyle and everybody's lifestyle is different. Here's the deal. Right. Society to 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 be society is trying to reach a level of efficiency that we don't understand. And in order for and, and because society is a, just like me and you live and we have breathing hearts, society, community has a breathing heart. Every family, when, whenever two, whenever one or when, whenever one or more things come together, a whole new life form is created that we can't see is it's there. It exists. It exists in another dimension. It may be a physical thing in another place, but here in the third dimension, we can't see it. It becomes an idea. And then there's like there's this whole ecosystem built around that idea. So like a family has a life of his own. Two families who live in the same neighborhood, they have a life of their own. Whole neighborhood connected has a life. Right. So all these different things sort of sort of working, working together. The reason why I say we it's not about the money is because we can all. How do I put it? How do we. Your neighbor may want to be in a 20,000 square foot house and you may just want to live in a tiny house. And this it, uh, interesting concept here is like your neighbor may believe it's impossible to live in a big house. They really, really want it. They really, really want it. But somewhere in their core, they don't believe they can do it. Right? Maybe they don't believe they have enough, the, enough skills. And they do. We all have enough skills. Every, everybody, even the dumbest person you met, has enough skills to be a multi, multi, multi millionaire. 
right? But for, they can't see it for whatever reason. Then you get the person, the tiny house. They're like, I can't live in this. There's people who, can, who believe that they can't live in a tiny house because they believe they can't afford it. So you get somebody who's living in, you may have somebody living on the street. They're homeless. And they're like, bro, I can't get this tiny house. Then you got somebody who's living in a tiny house and they're like, I can't get a bigger house. You got somebody who's living in a big house and they're like, I can't get a bigger house. And then you got people in huge houses like, I can't live in a tiny house. Where am I going to put all my stuff? When, you, know, you know what I'm saying? Like, or, 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 or maybe they think they have to buy a bunch of land and they don't think they can afford the land. Right? The, all these different things that go on out, that, that go on inside of our heads, they're all myths. They're all fake. Right. And, and to have the life you want, you don't necessarily need money. I was having a conversation with somebody and we we're talking about and, and we go to Donald Trump. If you don't leave I'm telling you what you want to do is you want to like this video. So more people listen to it, because this is this is this is very important. It's very important. They were going. Um, they were saying Donald Trump's broke. He's bankrupt. And he may be right. He in his book, The Art of the Deal. In his book, The Art of the Deal. And so you guys know, I'm not, I'm not a biased dude, bro. I'm not a biased dude. Like, I take in all the information. It's, it's my mandate here. It's what I do. I also have this book by Hillary Rodham Clinton. What happened? Right? So in Trump's book, The Art of the Deal, he talks about how he went bankrupt and how he made his comeback. And, and, and so the, the rumors circulate now that, hey, man, this guy's broke again. There was an interview he did in the 80s where he said, yeah, man, Barbara Walters asked me, she said, what would you do if you weren't broke? He said, I would probably run for president. So there's a very good chance that this guy is broke. Yeah, I mean, I, right. If, we, if, if, if all things considered, if we consider the book, his past record, their interview, you know, whatever. And if there, anything else we can conjecture. Right. We we can we can reasonably say that he's probably broke but at the same time we could reasonably say that he's rich here's the deal it doesn't even matter right what i was saying to this person when we were having this conversation i say hey look man right this guy okay he was he was born into a family where his father decided to go out and make a bunch of money his dad made a bunch of money we know that his father had a net worth of 200 million dollars right at least on whatever record the public record where people are getting this stuff from and so Right at the at the high end of the spectrum, this guy gave his son two hundred million dollars. And then this guy went out and he turned it into two billion dollars. That's a lot of money. That's a huge that's a humongous leap. Two hundred million dollars to two billion dollars. The, the way we throw numbers around on the news, it's all connected, bro. It's all connected. A million dollars used to be a hundred dollars used to be a lot of money. You had a hundred dollar bill. I was like, whoa, man, this dude's got a lot of money. Now you have a hundred dollar bill. It ain't shit. And I mean, we're reaching a point where like if you got a thousand bucks, it ain't shit. Like what is a thousand dollars buy? Right. You know what I'm saying? A million dollars ain't shit. That's like in the bigger scheme of things. Countrywide, all the money, all the money in circulation, there's about eighty four billion dollars in circulation right now. A million dollars is nothing. Is nothing. Here's another thing, right? Most of the people who who are millionaires, they don't physically have the money. Most of the people who claim to be millionaires, right? Like ninety percent of them, I would guess, they don't physically have. Like, there's no money in a bank account somewhere. Maybe they have a house they bought, and the house is worth five hundred thousand dollars, and they got a couple cars, and they got something, you know, retirement account or something like that. And they pull everything together with all with their ability to buy stuff for credit cards, and then the assets they have, or they believe that they have. They may have a million bucks. They say I'm a millionaire, but they don't have a million dollars in cash. It's got a million dollars in things that they can put into circulation, depending on whether or not people want to buy that stuff. So that's number one. So number one, the whole millionaire thing is kind of fictitious. It's kind of fictitious. Very few people are walking around with bags of money or got a million dollars in their bank account. Like they open their bank account and it's just got fucking seven zeros in there. Right? There's some people who do. We all can have that. But there's not a lot of people that do. But everybody can. So here's the deal, right? Thinking about that, right? We're printing money every day. Bunches of people already have some money. And in the bigger scheme of things, the news is talking about billions of dollars and trillions of dollars and billionaires and trillionaires. A million dollars is not a lot of money. But me and you both know a million dollars will go a long way. Right? If you're living on $20,000 a year and you got a million bucks, like, bro, like you're good for whatever a million divided by 20 is. And again, you don't have to be a mathematician, man. Right? That's why we made computers. 
to store information for us, to help us solve things, to do stuff for us. That's why, that's why I can say, hey, Cortana, what's a million divided by 20,000? One million divided by 20,000 is 50. So 50 years, if we had a million bucks, we could live on 20 grand. And there's some people out there like, yo, they could live on 20 grand like it ain't shit. That's their thing, like, bro, 20 grand. And so the goal is, is to accumulate, not just money, bear with me team, bear with me, not just money, the goal is to accumulate enough in order to be able to do the thing that you want to do, the stuff that you enjoy doing. You want to travel? That's why you want money. You want to play video games? That's why you want money. You want to you Netflix and chill with all the ladies in your neighborhood? That's why you get money. You want to freaking, right, you know what I'm saying? You want to stunt? You want people to look at you like you're a boss? That's why you get money. But hey, hey, look, right? You don't need the money to have any of that stuff. You just need the stuff. You just need the stuff, team. And, and you got to be. And so the way to get to the stuff is to do the thing that you were meant to do. That's the deal. Right. And, 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 that, and that is that is that is extremely hard. It's one of the hardest things you're ever going to have to figure out. But that's the goal. Just figure out who you are, what you're supposed to be doing and then set out to do it. Like, dude, man, I'll be I'm sitting here thinking. Right. And I, mean, I I discovered this a little while back. Right. You know what I'm saying? But I think it ever so often it just pops into my head. Is it, And I mean, it just it hits me like a, like somebody threw a brick through the window and it just hit me in the side of the head, man. Like, bro, like here's the deal, man. You're you're meant you're meant to write me personally. I'm meant to write software. But not not because I'm meant to probably build the next big company. I'm meant to write it so I can understand it so I can explain it to other people. So I have so so I can take a, a, a higher level view of things. So I'm meant to understand that stuff, but I'm meant to broadcast. I'm meant to speak. I'm meant to talk. This is a very natural thing to me, team. And then I built up these skills over the years. So I have this skill set underlying that. And I know how to plan stuff out and map stuff out. But again, I understand myself, dude. I am not I am not the avid planner. Like, dude, my brain, I have to be in a, a, a whole different kind of state of mind to, to make stuff happen. It's, but you don't know this unless you get to know yourself. Like, dude, right? I mean, like I have a there's a there's a routine that that I've spent figuring out how to manage and maintain my 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 mental acuity and my physical acuity on my own. Like before, like when you're out in a job, right, you got to wake up at this time. You got to go to this place. You got to do that thing. You got to blah, 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 blah. Right. That's a lot of people don't become millionaires because they are on somebody else's plan. The boss has a plan for you. The manager has a plan for you. The company has a plan for you. Fuck. The country has a plan for you. There's other people out there. You don't even know that got a plan for you. They're like, yo, when this person gets a job and they make their million dollars, we're going to tax the fuck out of them. Right. There's people who got plans for you, bro. So you got to have a plan for yourself. It's like, yo, bro, this, this is what my plan is going to be. Right. And then you go out and you and you pursue that thing. Me personally, right? Like I, I have this set of things that I want to produce every day. I don't hit all those things. I don't do all the things I need to do. Some in some instances, I get scared. I'm supposed to pick up the phone and call somebody to do this. I get scared. I get nervous. Right. I pay attention to that stuff. I write it down. I think about it. I, why is this? Why is that? I get I'm getting to know myself and that enables me to do the stuff that I'm good at better. You feel me, team? And if I'm able to do that better, if I do it over time and I get in front of enough people, I can turn those into opportunities that give me the thing I want. The reason why I started talking about Trump is because we got a guy who did go bankrupt. He was fifty nine million dollars in debt at one point. So, yeah, his dad gave him 200 million bucks and then he lost it all. and He was fifty nine million in debt. He has multiple buildings that he owns, like his company owns. He has uh, his name is on a lot of places and people pay him to have his name on these places. Like, that's a genius move. What if you could get a check every month just for having your name on some shit? Like, that's that's the goal. Get a check every month. Have your name on a build. Somebody wants to build a building. They come to you and say, we give you 20 million dollars. You let us put your name on it. Give it the Trump stamp of approval. And that, that comes with power, too. So you best believe this dude isn't like, yeah, write me a check and put my name on this. Hell to the no, man. This guy's a smart guy. He's going to go. He's going to check out the project. He wants to know everything that's going on. How do I know this? Because it's in the book. He wrote a whole book about this. He did a deal with the uh, he did a deal with Holiday Inn. 
Now he screwed up the deal and 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 he took advantage of them in a a crazy crazy way. But hey man, you know, is it, it was business, right? It's what he but he wasn't going to have this thing built any other kind of way. It was going to have gold and it was going to be luxurious and everything was going to be perfect. I mean, this guy's a perfectionist, dude. Like everything has to be it's got to be right, right? Somebody lays a carpet and there's a little ripple in the carpet. Can't have that. Get rid of the ripple. If somebody shows up and they say we have to we'll do this to the carpet. We got to do this like this. If the carpet isn't going to look brand new, he'll rip up the whole carpet and put down a whole nother carpet. You paint a wall and he looks at this wall and he sees the spot where the paint is off. If you can't make it look like the rest of the wall, he will make you repaint the whole wall. If the wall doesn't look like the rest of the room, repaint the whole room. If the room doesn't match the rest of the the, the rest of the, the 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 venue, we're gonna repaint the whole venue. If the venue doesn't match the building it's in, we're gonna remodel the whole fucking building. If the building doesn't match the neighborhood, then we're gonna. And if the if the building doesn't match the neighborhood and the neighborhood looks better, we're gonna remodel the building. We're gonna tear it down, build another one. But if this is the best looking building in the neighborhood, this is how this guy thinks. This is the best looking building in the neighborhood. We're going to remodel the neighborhood, make it the best looking neighborhood of all the neighborhoods in this city. Like, that's how this dude is thinking all the time. So he goes from being fifty nine million dollars in debt to being the president of the United States. And the entire time he's living in a penthouse apartment, his office is downstairs. So his commute is like two minutes. <laughs> Everything in his apartment is made of gold. There's people. Who dislike Donald Trump, there's people who like Donald Trump, have no idea where this guy lives. They, get, they know all about him. I was having a conversation with somebody. They were telling me, oh, man, Trump this, Trump that, Trump this, Trump that. And I was like, do you know where this dude lives? They're like, nah. I said, bro, you should look at, you should check it out. Right? Do you know that he was $59 million in debt at one point? Nah, man, I didn't know that. Oh, well, he got it back because he stole, he lied, he cheated, he did. But, I mean, it doesn't even matter, right? The point is, is that, okay, we got a guy who's broke, $59 million in debt, but somehow... He's living in this penthouse apartment. Everything is gold plated. All his dishes are covered in gold. All his silverware, all his flatware. Even when he was going to the bank to file for bankruptcy, he rode in a limousine. He's been flying to Trump, Trump Airlines. His Trump, his plane with Trump on it for forever. But even still, but now this dude is the most powerful person on the planet. He's at the helm of the most powerful military in the world. He flies on Air Force One. He he lives in the White House. The point, the point is, is that if he can do it, fucking anybody can do it, bro. But you got to have a plan. and You got to do what comes natural to you. He just did what came natural to him, man. He wasn't trying to be somebody else. He didn't get up on stage and was like, I'm going to wear a tie right now because everybody else is wearing a tie. He didn't get up on stage and say, I'm going to I'm going to talk about this stuff because everybody else is talking about this stuff. It was like, bro, this dude has been. The same way he dresses now, he was dressing like that in 1975. The same shit he says now, he was saying in 1975. The same, the same, right? Everything about this guy is exactly the same. Even his hairstyle, exactly the same. He just stuck to what was working for him all this time. And we can all do that. But we get caught up in somebody else's shit. So we don't make it, man. Because we're doing what somebody else is doing or we're doing what somebody else wants us to do or we're doing what somebody else believes we should do that's why i say like take everything i say with a grain of salt man like yeah you should learn algorithms but first you should get to understand yourself because maybe algorithms isn't what you need maybe you need somebody else who understands algorithms and you need to focus on something else like me i know me bro like i can't do all the stuff i can't do all the stuff the only way for me to get to where i want to go is i have to i have to have other people so I got Charlie Murphy now, which is cool. I got people in the Code 365 Startup Lab, which is cool, right? And I, I just got to grow that, right? And if the people who, who really love, like, these little aspects of things, they'll show up, right? And my goal is to provide an opportunity for them to do those things. But that's, that's the deal. Yes, the Internet can make you rich. And this is how. You figure out what it is you like to do, what you're good at, and then you figure out how to put that on the Internet and turn it into one person giving you something. They don't have to give you money. Just give you something. Give you an email address. Give you a phone number. Give you a social media invite. Follow you. You know what I'm saying? It just starts with that. 
and then you go and the ideas become bigger and they become better and you do and and, and they just grow but you got to keep the momentum and you got to step outside of your comfort zone ever so often like some people, they get on social media. There's, you wouldn't believe there's, there's people on social media with millions of followers who are broke. They got no money because they're afraid to ask for money. Like literally, if they just said, hey, right, I, I put up a PayPal button, give me a dollar. They would instantaneously have all the money they need. But they know what to do with it. Probably not. They probably just fucking blow it on bullshit. But, you know, hey, hey bro. Maybe if you have the, 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 the foresight to think like, hey, look, right, I got all these people who are following me. Why am I broke? This doesn't make any sense. Right. And you really think about it. It's because there, there's something that you're missing. You're you're. I don't know. The people are following you. But your thing is you're afraid to ask for the money. That's it. That's basically it. Or you're you're afraid to create something and put it out there that other people may consider valuable or you're afraid to ask like, hey, guys. What could I do for you guys that'll make your lives better that you would pay for? Or you're afraid to say, hey, look, there's a million of you following me and I'm broke right now. Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But again, you want to you want to bring something of value to people and then they'll, you know, you know what I'm saying? But that's that's the point. That's what I'm saying. Everybody here can be a millionaire. And another simple way to break it down, right, is let's take if we take a million bucks, one zero 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 and we divide it by. Let's just say we divide it by 12, right? It's $83,000 a month divided by, let's say there's 31 days in a month, right? It's $2,688 a day for 12 months. That's what a million bucks is. And so now you figure out how do I make $2,688 in a day? And that's not an easy thing to figure out. It's not. It's not easy at all, right? You know? And I was thinking about this yesterday. I mean, there's a whole bunch of stuff about this. We'll talk about this stuff later, team. We'll talk about this stuff later. Let me go check this out. To be a programmer, study HTML, CSS, JavaScript, backend languages. Once you know that, break your day into building stuff, study, practice algorithms, prepare for interviews, be professional, personable. Boom. There you go. He laid it out. If you're meant, if you're meant to teach how to code it, where is your tutorial, fam? Plug it. <laughs> there you go. There you go, T. Uh, if, you want to be, if you want to become a self-sufficient, also known as entrepreneur or boss... You need to build professionalism, communication skills, street smarts, business, and financial understanding. That's what I'm working on. There you go. Here's the, this. What I, here's another thing I'll tell you, man. Like, uh, like there's something in here, what we call it, professionalism, right? So, so some people confuse. They we get professionalism confused. We think professionalism is putting on a suit and a tie and talking fancy. That's not professionalism. Professionalism is is knowing when to say yes and knowing when to say no, and then delivering. Uh, when you do say yes or if you do say yes don't don't take the money unless you know you're going to deliver that's the deal right that's being professional hey look this is what we agreed on this is what i'm going to deliver and then you deliver it and then if you don't deliver you give the person their money back right it doesn't mean like you put on a suit and a tie and you go out and you talk like somebody you're not because you're pretending like bro if you wear like i wear hoodies every day right and so if I put on a suit and tie to go talk to somebody, I'm pretending. I'm, now, here's the deal. If I want to work in this environment where they wear suit and ties every day, then I need to wear a suit and tie. But if that's the case, I should probably wear a suit and tie every day. If, if you know someone who doesn't wear suits and ties, when they put on a suit and tie, they look awkward. They wear the shit wrong. They look out of place. They act a certain way. Like they act funny. They become robotic, right? They, they, right. So it's not a natural thing. And and you imagine, right? If you have to, if you have to bend yourself into knots to go through to make it through an interview to get a job at a place, what's going to happen when you start working there? You're just going to start showing up in hoodies? No, man. They're going to expect you to look like the person you showed up with when you did the interview. And now you have to become that person. And over time, they will transform you, or you will lose your mind. So. When, it, when we talk about professionalism, don't get it confused with becoming somebody else. Be your, you want to be yourself, but understand that there's only certain environments you can be yourself. And know that if you go into a different environment, like this is what's going to happen. If you stay there long enough, it's going to transform you. And then when you and if, and if you do get transformed, when you do leave, it may be hard. It may be harder to go on to something else. And that's how you meet a lot of people. They're stuck in the past, man. Life used to be so great. Back when I was doing this thing, it was blah, 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 blah. And they can't move forward because they're stuck in this other place. And for people who don't talk to people, it's probably even worse. 
Because now you can't move forward. You're stuck in the past and you got nobody. You're not telling anybody what's going on. So no, there, there's nobody there to tell you like, hey, man, you need to get over this shit. It's the only way you're going to get back to that place. You can't go back through time. The only way to time travel to the past in the third dimension is to go into the future. So this, it'll never be the same anymore. But you can get it close. The goal is to make it better. So that's what you got to do. You got to go, got to go push yourself into the future team. But yeah, but don't, don't pretend to be somebody else because you won't make it, man. You won't make it. You got to be yourself. And so like, like, look, man, like, hey, if, if, if you, if you, <laughs> I mean, there's some things that just don't exist. But then I haven't found one yet. Like, if you like wearing pajamas all day, there's no reason why you can't wear pajamas all day. But that means you got to be really, really good at something. You got to be the best at it. And that means you got to think a different kind of way. And, and most of the time, in my experience, that different kind of way is like, hey, man, like, this is who I am. This is what I do. This is how you can buy it. And then you just tell that to as many people as possible. And some people make shit. People will never buy it. And it's because they aren't delivering enough value. That's it. Right? And so, hey, right, nobody's buying what you got. It's because it is either you're not getting in front of enough people or you're not delivering enough value. Or you're not getting, fr you're not getting in front of enough people enough, right? And it, it's, it goes across everything. Selling, selling cars, selling stickers, selling fucking keychains, selling cars, selling houses, selling businesses, buying businesses all this it's all related man it's all the same stuff right there's guys who go out and make just as much money right buying and selling houses wearing flip flops flip flops is there are guys who make bunches of money buying and selling houses wearing business suits each of those people they're being themselves some people fake it man but you see them as they, these are the depressed people these are the these are the people that make it possible for pharmaceutical reps to live dream lives because they're out doing some shit that they really don't want to do, that they don't like doing. They're participating with, they're, they're, they're engaging with people that they really don't like. Also, they can make a whole bunch of money. And at the end of the day, they're miserable. They have ulcers. They have heart attacks. They fucking, all kinds of shit, man. All kinds of stuff. The system is out of balance. So beware of that, man. That's the whole deal. That's the, I found that when people are themselves, and I mean like, you got to be yourself within the right context. You just can't be yourself anywhere. You got to find the right. And everybody has a place. Everybody has a context. And these are the shit I'm talking about right now. This is all first world problems. The ability to decide what you want to do and what character you want to play here. Like I'm here in America. To what character you want to play on the grand stage that is the United States of America with options of being the poorest, most destitute, loneliest, most depressed person or being the president. And running the entire country like that's that's the spectrum of things you can be. Each comes with their own level of difficulty and hardship and heartache and pain and whatever. Right. But most people, they get to where they're going by being themselves. That's this. This is what I noticed, man, just being themselves. Except for actors and actresses, they get to where they're going by being someone else. But even that is a skill in and of itself. And a lot of if, we'll talk about that later on, too. A lot of actors and actresses feel guilty. And so they 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 tell us to do shit that's not in our best interest. Um, if you want to become a self-sufficient entrepreneur boss, blah, 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 blah. When you go into a room or meeting, look for suckers. If you can't see him or her, that is you. I've heard that. I used to I used to, I've heard that at the poker table. Right. If you're if you're sitting at the poker table and you don't know who the sucker is, the sucker is you. This is true. It's a true thing. It's a true thing. I don't look for the suckers, though. I look for the opportunities. Look for the opportunity. Always opportunity. Expansion. Growth. Who at the table can you learn from? If I sit down at a, at a poker table and I got a thousand bucks and I lose and I lose my money, I lose all my money. But while I'm there, I learn from somebody who has a million dollars. It's worth it. Thousand dollars is lost. It's worth the thing. If I sit down and I'm just looking for the sucker. Right. I'm focused on I'm focused on people playing badly, which means I'm focused on playing badly, which means eventually I'll begin to play badly. And so check it out. Right. Poker is a cutthroat sport. We're all trying to win. If my goal is to sit down at the poker table and win every single time. What do I tell you? Spend your time looking for the sucker or you are the sucker. 
while you're looking for the sucker, I'm looking for the opportunity to capitalize on you not paying attention to me. Or I'm going to act like a sucker, get you all wound up, get you all gassed up. Then I'm going to fucking clean your clock, take all your loot. So keep that in mind, team. I always look for the opportunity. I don't want to tear anybody else down. You know what I'm saying? I want to build people up, man. Make people stronger. Because if they get stronger, I get stronger. Communication skills is difficult. Communication skills is yeah. Communication skills is difficult. It is difficult. It just takes practice, team. Practice, practice makes perfect. Cass, you keep talking about Trump, but I think there are smarter, more business savvy people out there. You're right. There are smarter, more business savvy people out there, but nobody listens to those people. Nobody pays attention to those people. Nobody knows who the fuck those people are. I point to Trump because he's the president of the United States. And that is the most important job you can have right now on this planet. So I mentioned Trump. A lot of people go, Trump is a fucking idiot. How many of those people have ever been president or will ever be president? Fucking none of them. And then even more so, like 97% of those people, man, they're poor, broke, lonely. So I, I could talk about fucking Rockefeller and Benjamin Franklin all day, but that ain't going to get people lit. Yo, Trump gets people lit, bro. <laughs> he gets people fired up, man. Because we all can look and say, hey, look, this is not a perfect guy. But we but shit, you can be just as good as him. You know what I'm saying? And so that's why I go there. That's why I go there, team. And also it weeds people out, man. Anybody anybody who doesn't like me because because I, I talk about Trump in a favorable manner, fuck them. You know what I'm saying? So yo, if people roll in and they see that and they want to roll out because of that. And so it's 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 on purpose. It's an on purpose type of thing, man. It's not. It's uh I'm I'm thinking. I'm thinking through that. Uh let's see. Exactly. Right. He says, honestly, I think the most smart move Trump. I did, And we talked about that. The smart move. Smart move. One of the smartest things he did is to realize what he's good at and what he's bad at and get other people to do the rest of the stuff. Now, if you don't have money, you got to be a certain kind of way. Right. You either got to take what you want or you have to be cunning or you have to be convincing. Most of the time, you can just be honest. And people are like, okay, all right. You know what I'm saying? Right. I was, the honest is probably the best. But hey, bro, I can't pay you. But if you want to work on this thing, cool. You know what I'm saying? Some people will take you up on offer. Some people won't. Right? Based on their confidence in you and your ability to do whatever it is you got to do. Uh, but yes, that's. But and he's not the only one. Henry Ford, Rockefeller, J.P. Morgan, Steve Gates. I mean, not Steve Gates, Steve Jobs, Bill Gates. All these guys, there was somebody else behind the scenes that we don't even know about. John Paul DeJuria, founder of Patron. Somebody else. He had a partner. We don't know about. Jeff Bezos. Jeff Bezos has a partner nobody knows about. This guy literally lives on a yacht. He's, he's rich beyond your wildest dreams. He lives on a yacht sailing around the world. He does his job from his yacht. He's... A, on paper, he's not as rich as Jeff Bezos, but apparently in reality, they can buy a lot of the same things. All right, so he's got he's got some cash, but nobody hears about this guy. Nobody knows this guy. We're all we're all talking about Jeff. Jeff goes to the office every day. This dude is on his yacht sailing around the world doing what he does. Running the whole logistical side of the business, pretty much like this is the brain that we don't see. He's there. He exists. I talk about that guy. Nobody gets excited. I talk about Jeff Bezos. Everybody gets fired up. You start talking about how Amazon is doing bad stuff. People go, they go nuts. Oh, my gosh. Amazon. And so that's that. Right. Any anybody who looks at anybody and is like, I hate that guy. I can't listen to this guy. Whatever. Right. Dude, they're going to have some problems, bro. Have some problems, man. Right. There's people like there's people to dislike, but it's like, man, you know, OK, cool, man. So that's why I say that, because some people get real bent out of shape, man. And 10 years from now, they'll come. They'll be like, you know what? I understand what this dude was saying. Hopefully it's not too late then. Uh, let's see. Honestly, I think. Wizzy. Think you have to study both those who build from scratch and those who maintain what was given to them. Ooh, that is a good one. That is a good one. That is a good one, team. That is a good one. 
I believe that you might want to do it in order to, though. In order to. Here's the deal, right? When we go to school, grades 1 through 12, grades 12 through however many, right? The, the four years of college and then some. We're taught to look at how to maintain, but from a different sort of angle. And what happens is a lot of us hit like where our parents was or slightly above that. Right? Some people, they I mean, they break out of the park, right? Parents, parents were poor and they become billionaires or right? parents lower middle class. They become upper middle. I mean, not upper middle class, but they become wealthy in their own right. Stuff like that. So when we look at. Uh, if you if you study how to maintain before you study how to get, you will never get. The stuff you need to maintain it. I mean, you, you would never get anything that needs maintaining. And then think about this, right? There's a lot of people. We believe that we're learning how to maintain. But then like they win the lottery and then they lose it all. And now they can't get it back because they won the lottery. So he's playing's right. You got to study both how to get and how to maintain. But the order is how to get. And it's not even how to get. Like there's no step. There's no set step. There's no set process. It's in your head. It's the thing. The mindset. That's that's what we. That first thing we got to get is the mindset. And then everything else just comes. And the mindset. What I'm talking about is. Is. Understanding what you're afraid of. Understanding what you're capable of. Understanding your ego. Those are the three things. If you can understand what you're afraid of, then you can ask yourself, why am I afraid of this? What scares me about it? What can I do to overcome this thing? And it's not like I'm afraid to jump off a building or some shit like that. Maybe that is it. If that's the thing you want to do and like you have this calling to like jump off of buildings, maybe that's a question that you're supposed to answer for whatever reason. Maybe the universe has you answering that question because one day you're going to be the president. <laughs> so you're you're compelled to ask this question. Why do I jump off? What you know, and who the fuck knows, man? You know what I'm saying? But that's one thing like the fear. Like, why am I afraid? And I mean, like, really, it's not what you think sometimes. Like, there's people who who don't have what they want, not because they're afraid of failing. They're afraid of success. Like, it seems odd, but it's true. Like, for me, when I was going out and I was getting clients, it wasn't because I was afraid to, like, go. I was afraid to go talk to people, of course. Right? You know what I'm saying? Like, that was a scary part. But for me, what was even scarier is what would have to happen after I got the client. Like, I got to put together this whole process. They're looking at me as the expert. And then, right, I got to go find another client at some point. And then I got to do the work and find the client. So there's this stress, this anxiety, all this stuff that comes with it. And you can't make any moves if you're stuck in all of that stuff. If you can't think through, why am I afraid? Or after I make the phone call or I sit down with the person and I get them to agree to yes, why don't I go to the next step? Then you you can't make it. But when you can think about this stuff, it's like, yo, man, I realize like I really don't want to build stuff for other people. I would rather build something, turn it into a software as a service, make it super simple, easy to use as possible, and then they can use it. But it's like, how do you get there, right? You got to build it, or you got to get somebody to pay you to build it, or you have to make some money some other way so you can build this thing. And so now you set off on this path. Like, how, how do I do this? How do I make this money? Right? Maybe I can get a. Maybe I can get clients, and I can do this thing at the same time. Maybe I can't. I don't know. But maybe I have to hire a bunch of people. But again, that's not a conver That's a, that's a conversation that you you can have with yourself. You can have somebody else. But it's a conversation that that you have to have at some point. But yeah, I would say how to get, but not how to get. How to develop the mindset. Right? What what is? Because if you can, if you can, if you can acknowledge fear. And then break it down and then act in the face of it and understand it is there. And you can understand that like, hey, you don't know it all. You're going to slip and fall. People are going to make fun of you. That's the ego. And then you understand your capabilities, what you're good at, what you're interested in. Then you can't lose. You can't lose. Uh, let's go back down here. Team do 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 Wizzy. Think you have to study. Cass is talking from experience. We used to sell. We used to call him here Mr. Microsoft Swag. Wearing a different Microsoft shirt every day. I, no, I had I had two shirts. Yeah, I had two Microsoft. I still got them too. I got one. It's got binary on. I got one that says Microsoft. I just that was that my military training, man. I just I just go and I just fit into a place. I try. I try to be not even not necessarily fit, but I try to absorb 
the atmosphere, I guess. Right? It gives me an understanding. And, and it, put, it gives you ends that like you wouldn't, you wouldn't normally have. You know what I'm saying? Like people will talk to you that wouldn't normally talk to you. Stuff, stuff like that. Right? You know what I'm saying? So like I had a lot of conversations with a lot of people there. I met a lot of people. I got a lot of friends. That, but not, not a lot of friends. I have at least one. Person I could potentially call on if I I needed something, you know what I'm saying? Um, but that's how you meet those kinds of people. And I mean, but that was just me being me, right? You know what I'm saying? Like if I'm gonna be here and work in this building and be at this place, it's like a dream place for a lot of people, man. You know what I'm saying? Like even if you're not a full time employee, just being a contractor there is like, like bro, like this is the thing. Everybody knows what Microsoft is, so it's pretty cool, man. So I wore the shirts and everything. You know, some people thought I was cheesy and shit, but fuck them, man. I'm from the streets. So I don't give a fuck, right? You know, wear what I want. I had a good time. I love those shirts. I love Microsoft, dude. Microsoft made a lot of stuff happen for me. You know, not, not, not way before the job, bro. Way before the job. I mean, I was building computers and installing windows on them when I was 16, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, this is, I don't know. But yeah, man, I live, I, if, if I'm there, I'm living it or trying my best. And again, I'm not, you know, see what else we got. Hey, yo, Sean, what is up, team? Mr. Pwang! I like how I like how you flip the look for the sucker. <laughs> I like how you flip the look for the sucker thing. That's a good perspective. Ah, yeah, man. But you also need to look for the sucker. In the you also need to look for the sucker in the street smart, street smart kind of way. Like if you're pitching a product. Oh yeah, most definitely. I see where Mr. I see what Mr. Poing is saying. The investor takes advantage of you. And low balls you and low balls you for your product or cotton. And here's the deal, Mr. Poing. You're talking from you're talking from a place of weakness, bro. There was a quote I saw yesterday. This is gonna this is gonna this is gonna this is gonna seal the deal for a lot of people right here, man. Um Nipsey Hustle. I don't know if he said it, right? I saw this on the Nipsey Hustle quote. He said, You can't finesse me. I do it out of love. You know what I'm saying? And here's the deal. If you can't be if you believe yourself unmanipulatable. You can't be manipulated. It's impossible. Because no matter what somebody does, your your next action is probably going to be. And, but, and here's the thing. It's not just about belief. It's not about belief. There's a lot of people who believe they can who they can't be manipulated. But of course, right, we see it like they're doing stuff all day, every day. Right. They're going to jobs they hate every day. Somebody's manipulating them. Right. Or you could take this approach. They're manipulating themselves. And that's what fucks people up. Like, here's the deal, man. The person who's going to go into the room and look for the sucker. Right, bro. They already got if if that's their if that's their verbiage, they already got issues, man. They already got issues. And think. Uh, it's like. I'm a, I'm a, I'm not a movie buff, right? I'm not a movie. I'm a I'm an idea guy. Right. So like. That that phrase, the sucker phrase, that comes from a movie Rounders. A lot of people watch them. I've watched, I've seen Rounders probably like fucking a hundred times, right? I played tons. I've lost more money playing poker than some people will make this year, right? You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> uh, and and I, bro, I probably I'm probably down over like a whole poker career. I would like to say break even. I mean, there's been times where I've made like I've made a lot of money, man, thousand, two, three thousand dollars in a day, shit like that, right? Uh, not not often right but then there's times where i've lost like two three thousand dollars in a day too so it's hopefully it, you know even if it all doesn't balance out it, it, here's the deal i'm not rich from being a poker player so i could say i was a bad poker player that's number one that's number one but hey here you got a guy right and and just to show show you guys what's up man like just so so Mr. Poing knows, bro, like this is a book <laughs> that I just pulled off of my shelf, bro. Look at this. Doyle Brunson Super System. This is a book on super poker. So I understand poker better than most people I talk to. And and what I'm saying is like the mindset. The mindset, bro. Here's the deal. Doyle Brunson, he's never going to tell you to look for the sucker at the table. Right. But if he does. We got we to gotta pay attention to where he's saying this at. If he's saying it at the table, there's a reason why he's saying it. If he's saying it in, in, 
in in his in his house in the cigar lounge with one of his best friends, it has a whole different context. He isn't going to tell you this at the poker table with the belief that you're going to pick out the sucker and you guys are just both going to clean up the table and make a bunch of money. Right. Unless you're his friend, unless he likes you somehow. Beyond that, he's trying to beat you out of money. He's trying to take your money. You know what I'm saying? So he won't he won't say it. the deal is, is like if you if you in the movie. In every movie, there's stuff that's said and there's stuff that's done that is if we take it as gospel, if we take it as truth. It will mess us up, man, because the people who th this is all stuff that's contrived from other people loosely based on other stories. So what we got to do is we got to think through these things. So I th I, I'm thinking, number one, whatever word you fixate in your mind becomes it. You can you make it a reality. So if you're focused on. Find the sucker or you're the sucker, find the sucker or you're the sucker. What are the last two words you're saying? The last three words. So I don't look for that. I used to. No success there. No success. Some people may have success. But if they have enough of it, you'll never hear from them. Right? They'll never give you. The, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And so maybe they'll give you the secret. This book could be one big farce to just turn a, everybody on the planet into a bad poker player. So when I read the book. I'm asking myself questions. Why did he write this? Why is he saying this? What does he have to gain? From this information. Right? So what does somebody have to gain from looking for the sucker? Right? You want to take advantage of somebody. That's terrible, bro. You're breaking all kinds of cosmic rules right there. You want to win the game, of course. You want to win the game. You want to win the game of poker. But it's you make it infinitely harder when you're like, when you're focused on negativity. You just make it hard, bro. It's just hard. And I say this, right? There's people in combat who focus on not dying and they die. People who focus on living and they live. There's people who focus on living and they die. There's people who focus on who focus on dying and they live. But like, hey, look, man, right? If <laughs> it, it all 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 everything else aside, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna focus on the outcome I want. I don't care about the suckers. I don't care about the bombs. I don't care about the bullets. I don't care about the shit falling from the sky. I don't care about the asshole yelling in my ear. I don't care about none of that stuff. What do I want? And the, the world will get in our way, and it'll try to slip us up, man. You you having a good day, and then boom, somebody hits your car, somebody yells at you, or somebody slaps you, man, and then we go off into a rage, and then we're all, we're you know all falls. Into, you know what I'm saying? So I just try to, you know. It's, it's hard, it's difficult, it's life, but never look for the negative stuff. Always watch what you're saying, always watch what you're thinking. Pay attention to it, let it flow over you like thought, like, like water. Yeah, things will be better, man. Anxiety will go down, stress will go down. That's what I, that's what I mean. I've, I get what you're saying, man. I understand street smarts, I understand all this stuff, bro. I, and... I'm happy you're making me talk about it because you help, you're you making me convey this stuff to everybody who's in the room, man. Because some people need to hear that stuff, man, bro. We all can win. Somebody, yo, we all here can be multi, multi, multi millionaires. Somebody will be a millionaire tomorrow, maybe. Right? Somebody will be a millionaire in 20. We all can do it. It's just time. And it's what we chose to do. Our, the path we're going to follow. It's about our belief. And it's about keeping this negative nonsense out our head, man. Right? Instead of, is this going to work, is this is going to work. This is going to work. Instead of, how can I make this work? It's like, hey, this is going to work. I will make it work. You'll figure it out. You'll find the answer. The answer will come. And some people are like, oh, you're daydreaming. Right? It'll never happen. They don't know. They don't know. They don't know. Because one thing we can learn from everybody, not just Trump or everybody, Jeff Bezos, uh, anybody, anybody, anywhere you ever seen in a magazine, on TV, driving a nice car down the road business owner all these people man all these people they were focused on something they weren't focused on how not to lose they were focused on how to win so you focus on how not to lose you lose more often than not and when you have these conversations with enough people it just stands out man you you, you understand it. and then like i know like when some people i just got lucky You're fucking bullshit man bullshit and this is how you know is the ultimate truth the ultimate truth you got people who are rich <laughs> right ain't even gonna go there man i'm telling you bro Tell you, man. You see, necessarily agree on that. My perspective of look for the sucker thing is coming from a martial arts military situational awareness, pre preparedness, defense. 
and offense. I got you, man. I mean, we just disagree, disagree to disagree. Disagree to disagree. We're both looking for the same thing. We're both looking for the win. We're both looking for the win. You're, you're looking for you're looking for the win by way of somebody lacking in their awareness. That's what the sucker is. So you're looking for the you're looking for a way to win by taking advantage of somebody else's weakness, which is cool, man. I mean, there's I mean, if that's what you do, that's what you do. I'm saying that I don't I don't I don't care about I, I care. I mean, it's it's rough. It's rough. I, just, I stay away from that sort of I, I try to stay away from those thoughts and mindsets. The weak, the with the 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 I'm not looking for the sucker, man. I'm not, I don't want to I don't want to take advantage of anybody if they're out to get me. Of course. Right. You know what I'm saying? Most people are not out to get you. Like if I'm in a situation where like I'm in combat with somebody, yeah, of course, you know what I'm saying? Uh, but it, it's not I mean, I guess there's nuance to it. Like I can't I can't bring myself to say. Right. Look for the sucker or you're the sucker. I mean, I can say it, but I can't, I can't, I can't, I don't believe in that statement. Uh, It's not a, it's not a belief for me. But anyway, team, thanks for hanging out with your biggest fan of the real cast. here. Yo, we got through all the chats. Mr. Poang, man. I love this dude. Mr. Poang, he be bringing it. And here's the deal. Here's the deal. We ain't got to be, we ain't got to be enemies about any of this stuff, man. We're all trying to get to, I'm trying to live the good life. He's trying to live the good life. We're all trying to live the good life. It's frustrating. Things get hard. Things get difficult. But at the end of the day, man, we're trying to get to the same place. And that's a part of the game, man. I couldn't be happy unless I was sad ever so often. And, yo, look, if I can manufacture a little sadness, if I can manufacture a little discord, turn it on when I want and turn it off when I want. That's the goal. That's one of the goals. Ultimate freedom. The ultimate freedom. Have an argument when you want. End the argument when you want. Prove your point when you want. Don't prove your point when you want. That's the ultimate freedom. So, yeah. I'm with I'm with playing on that, man. That's what that's what we're trying to get to. Cast, talk about the street smart concept of it. I'm a bit lost. Okay. All right. So we're gonna hang out a little bit long. We got Wizzy still here. He asked another question, team. Uh not getting taken advantage advantage of and being able to get the upper hand on somebody if it is necessary. That okay. See, I don't know where Mr. Poing is from, man, but that that is that is a good that is that is I don't know, man. I don't even know what I was going to say after I read that. I should I shouldn't have read it now. I Because now my knowledge has been expanded based on his comment. <laughs> so I'm just like, ah, you know. But that was that's that's Mr. Poing put it, put it right. I'm trying to think of a think of a situation like. um. Here's the deal. I guess this if if I had to put it any kind of way, this is how I would put it. Street smarts, right? Is there's different level there, there's there's different levels to everything. And so let's let's take let's take an actual street scenario. Street actual street street scenario. Like this is some Dave Chappelle fucking keeping it real when she, right like like when keeping it real goes wrong type of stuff so you're in a neighborhood you've never been in before and this has happened to me before in a neighborhood you've never been in before or you're in a situation you've never been in before around some people that you don't know and these people they're they're violent people they're gangsters right you know what i'm saying so somebody rolls up on you and they say some shit right There, there's, there's one type of person, they would make a big scene. Ah, oh, you know, whatever. Right? They make a big old scene, but they, they, they're not. They can't. They're not gonna do anything. They can't do anything. Here's, here's. A, there, there's a story. There's a story about Nas and Tupac. Here's a good example. This is a good example. Nas and Tupac. So for those of you who are into this hip hop shit, this is gonna make sense, right? Nas is a real gangster. Nas has been a gangster since the day he was born right and i mean like this this, he's not like he's not a gangster trying to be somebody else he's nas like that's why he calls himself nas think of this shit right he's not the richest rapper he's not the poorest rapper he's a comfortable he's in a comfortable position he does what he wants to do when he wants to do it he lives the life he wants to live he doesn't have all the money but he's got enough to live the life that he wants to live 
And he has the mindset. He knows that if he wants more money, he can go get more money. He'll figure it out, right? And this dude is from the streets. When we watch the movies, like street smarts, like motherfuckers running around with guns and acting all crazy and shit. And I'm sure Nas did that at one point. So anyway, Tupac has this. Tupac does something. Tupac is like one of the biggest artists in the world. Tupac came out of nowhere. A lot of people think Tupac is a gangster. Tupac was not a real gangster, bro. I mean, he was gangster, but he was like, he was like me, man. He wasn't like destined for the streets. Like this dude was on some other stuff. A lot of the shit he raps about is stuff that he had no. It's 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 third party information. It's not, it's not, it's not the life. It's, it's either somebody else's story or it's a story that was manufactured by him. And when I say manufactured, he may, there are situations where he manufactured the situation. I'm not, that's not saying Tupac's not real or anything, but like, I, I mean, I don't know. Like you have to dig deep into what like real would be when it comes to like the street stuff. So anyway, Tupac rolls up on Nas and Tupac is acting a fool. He's yelling at this guy, getting all crazy fucking Talking all kinds of shit. I'm the best rapper in the world. This is that and the third, right? And and Nas is like, yo, man, that's dope, man. You know, I love you for freaking being who you are. Your music's really good, blah, blah, blah. And so, and so some people are looking at this and they're like, Nas is a punk ass bitch. He's just kissing Tupac's ass, right? Like Tupac is the real OG over here, right? You know, Tupac this, Tupac that, Tupac this. Who's alive and who's dead right now? Even more so. Nas is a real fucking gangster, bro. This dude is, he's in, he's, I think he's, I think he's from Brooklyn. He's there all day, every day, 24 hours a day. Like that's, that's his spot. That's his people, right? Snoop Dogg told the story. Snoop Dogg is like, I'm standing there and I'm looking over. Snoop Dogg's got street smarts, right? He's looking around, right? He's looking around. He sees all these people with all these guns. Like he, and it's not even guns. Like you just know. Like, you get the feeling. That's a part of street smarts. You got this feeling. You know when to shut the fuck up. Hey, yo, these dudes are circling around. This guy's doing this. These, this, these dudes are putting their hands in their pocket. Like, you know. Like, that shit just... But that's awareness, right? You, you don't... You don't... You can, you can train for that type of stuff. But that's not something you like. You like learning a book or some shit. You know what I'm saying? It's like you be, you, you're in that situation. But then, like, take Tupac, for instance, right? Maybe, t- maybe Tupac knew something we did. Maybe he had a fucking nuclear bomb in his pocket. I don't know. Snoop is like, I'm looking at this dude, and we were nobody. We're in New York from California, right? We're in this park with Nas, who's surrounded by all these gangsters in his neighborhood in this park. And you're talking shit to this dude. Right. And the power may be in the fact that there's so many people around. We're in this public place that he can't really do anything. He can't do anything. But somebody else may fuck you up. Tupac could be dead now because of that. That deal he had with Nas. You you hear what I'm saying? Like. Like that's that's street smarts. That's street smarts on a whole different level. Right. So you got some people who are looking who are looking for the win. So there's a lot of people like, yo, Tupac is a street smart motherfucker, right? Tupac is there in the moment he gets that win, right? He saw this opening to make this rapper look, you know, whatever kind of way. Again, Nas isn't the richest rapper. He's not the most popular rapper. He's not the whatever. But this dude is still alive and he's living exactly like he wants to live. You know what I'm saying? So that's, so that's the break. And say Job, for instance, right? And again, right? Here's the, here's the deal. Here's the deal. There is, when I say, t- man, I mean, it, it goes so deep, man. I mean, it's like this shit is impossible to, to like really break down to somebody in like a fucking uh, a hour and a half type of like street smarts is a deep thing. So what I would say is <laughs> fucking always be asking questions, right? There's a three. If we could break it all down, it's like three basic questions. Thomas Sowell talks about these questions, right? What at what cost? What do I have to gain? And then what is it? What is it compared to what? Right. And then I would throw something. What do they have to gain? At what cost? What do I have to gain? What do they have to gain compared to what? And then that that'll 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 break it down for most people. And and that's every situation. OK. Right. I'm going to go. I'm going to go to the grocery store. At what cost? Right. I got to get in my car. It's dangerous to drive there. 
What do I have to gain? I have to gain groceries. What if I don't go? Then you don't get groceries. How dangerous is it? Well, you know, even though driving cars is statistically more dangerous than flying a plane, the chances of me crashing my car while higher than me crashing in the plane are still significantly low based on the number of cars on the road. So that's why we go out and we get in the car and we drive to the grocery store. Now, the likelihood of, of, of us crashing the car is extremely low, but the likelihood of us dying if we do in certain situations is extremely high. Right. So we so all these things consider right to have street smarts is just ask a different a different set of questions. That's it for me. The, the set of questions I ask is like, because I'm not, I don't want to, I'm not, I don't want to put myself in the mindset of loss. And so I try to keep those words out of my mantra. I'm not looking for the sucker. I'm looking for the opera. I'm looking, I'm not looking for the person to take advantage of. I'm looking for the opportunity to take advantage of. The opportunity. The opportunity will present itself all throughout the game, all throughout the players, all throughout different situations, how these different players interact with each other. Opportunity will present itself when this guy gets up and goes to the bathroom. Opportunity will present itself when he comes and he sits down. Opportunity will present itself when he comes a, when, it, when there comes a drink. And so Mr. Poyne, he's saying like, hey, like I'm looking for that so I can take advantage of. And we all are. Of course, we all are. It's just maybe maybe I'm taking it in the wrong way that he's saying it. Like I'm taking it. I'm taking it like this person has to lose. I mean, I don't know, man. Right. Because this is a situation where like you're in competition with this person. You want to take their money. Right. And so I see where Mr. Poing is coming from. Maybe he didn't say that's why you you, you don't need to be street smart in church or some shit. <laughs> but that's 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 sort of my that's my philosophy on it is I'm looking for the opportunity. And the opportunity isn't always found in some person. For me, the opportunity I don't believe that it's always found in an individual's shortcoming in a particular situation or in a particular event. The situation just may come from me seeing an opportunity then rising above the whole thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, So for, for me, street smarts would be like I sit down at the table and while this guy's identified the sucker on the other end of the table, he's going to take this guy for a thousand bucks. I'm looking at the whole opportunity, right? I'm looking at the whole poker room, right? There's one sucker at this table, but maybe that table, nobody knows how to play. I'm going to roll over there, right? How can I play with these people and they still love me when I get up from the table? So I go there. I take advantage. Of, I make a bunch of money. And then I, I convince a bunch of people to let me teach them how to play poker. And they give me even more money. To do that, right? You know what I'm saying? Like, that's the kind of shit that I'm looking for. So I don't know, man. I don't know how to break it down, dude. This is like fucking, this is years and years and years of thinking about this kind of stuff. So I got more stuff to think about. Uh, <laughs> Queens. There we go. Queens Bridge. The Queens Bridge Projects. Snoop, talk, Snoop talks out of both sides of his mouth. Of course he does. He's Snoop Dogg. He first criticized Nas for being peaceful and at that moment. Then years later, he bigged, he bigged him up. Hey, yo, D. Giuliani, you're right. Hey, here's the deal, right? That's how it goes, man. That's how it goes. I just asked, why was he saying it at that moment? And why was he saying it at a different moment? What did he have to gain? What did he have to gain at this other moment? Most importantly, what did I have to gain from listening to the, any of this shit at any moment? Nothing. I don't give a fuck about Tupac or Snoop Dogg or Nas. Right? I like them. I love them. It's human beings. But at this particular moment in time, Tupac ain't doing shit for me. Neither Snoop Dogg or Nas, right? Beyond the stuff that I can learn from them. But, you know, that is what it is. So that's, uh, you know, that, that, that's, my, that's my take on the whole street smart thing, man. And I mean, it, it, goes way, it goes way deeper than that. But basically, I don't know, man. I believe that in my experience, like the street smart people, they're very, they're very introspective. And they tend to think, I mean, in the, like, like there's gang, there's these, there's gangsters and there's gangsters, right? The really street smart people, they have a long term vision that like we can't even imagine, right? And so again, right, they aren't focused on a individual or an individual thing or individual idea or thought process or belief. They're just navigating through the world, right? And they're trying to make as few waves as possible, because at some point they're gonna need these people along the way i think that's 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 sort of what i've seen 
And I've met good gangsters and I've met bad gangsters. The, the good gangsters, you don't even know that they're gangsters, bro. They got the ultimate street smart. And those are motherfuckers, they won't even tell you, right? They just live it. They just know. They just do it, right? That's like, it's one of those things. And the bad ones, I mean, you, they're, they're all in jail. Well, not all of them. There's a bunch of them running around on the streets right now. Mr. Pint. You need to be able to use offense and defense. Yeah, most definitely, man. Miss, Mr. Poing, man. We, me and Mr. Poing go on the same page. <laughs> for real, for real. I understand the hip hopping, the hip hop, the hip. Oh, the hip. <laughs> it's a hip hop analogy. I understand the hip hop analogy. Street smarts is finding the right opportunity while not being strung along. There you go. There you go. That's why I like hanging out with you guys. You guys always bring fire. But hey, look, man. We've been here for a very long time right now. Uh, one hour, 42 minutes, team. It's time for your mans to roll out. We got a few more things to do. I think I'm going to drop back in here, check you guys out tonight, maybe bring you some more, uh, maybe bring you some some hot fire. Thanks for hanging out with me here, team. Ayo, hey, everybody who rolled up in here, much, much, much appreciated. I want to thank Trav again for that super chat, team. D. Giuliani, yo, Wizzy, D. Giuliani, Mr. Poing, yo, you guys brought the fire today. You guys brought the fire today, team. Ron Romero is always asking some fire questions too. Juan, Juan, Juan. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I say his first name just because I'm used to saying it like that, man. I don't know why. Like, it's never, but Romero, 126. Uh, Sean, thanks, man. Everybody who rolled up in here, thanks. Much appreciated, team. It is your biggest fan, the real Casadero. Like I said, if you want to, uh, if you want to get notifications when the updates come, man, I'll, most of you guys know what to do. But if you're brand new here, subscribe to the channel, man. If somebody says I'm supposed to remind you guys every time, that's how I get more subscribers. I don't fucking know, bro. Don't, you know, man. Subscribe, don't subscribe, whatever. Uh, and then also, if you want to stay in the loop, you're going to check out therealcasadero.com, bro. We got a couple mailing deals on here. We drop a mailing list. And if you want to become a patron of the arts, then what you do is you click this button and it'll take you over to uh, the Code 365 Startup Lab where, we are, where we're creating art for the internet to help people learn to code for fun and profit and share our projects and experiments with you guys. Um, and for those who have bigger pockets and deeper wallets, some investment opportunity, maybe not investment opportunity, advertising opportunity. My bad team. My bad. Uh, and then what else? There was something else. I think that's it, man. I think that's it. I'm your biggest fan. The real Casadero team. Go out, go out, get it. I hope you guys are building stuff. Nobody dropped any links to any portfolios or anything up in here, bro. Are y'all afraid, dog? I don't know. May, uh, you know what? I think there's a I think that there's a possibility that people drop their links to stuff in here, but YouTube just filters them out. But we got something for that YouTube. We got something for that YouTube team. Don't you guys worry. Everybody who's in the Code 365 Startup Lab, you will have a voice on a very big platform that we're building here, man. Me and Charlie Murphy, we're working for you. We're working for you, baby. I just want to say thanks for hanging out with me here, team. I'm your biggest fan, The Real Casadero. I will see you guys in the next broadcast. Peace.